Hi again, young people, and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel, uh, Darla D's Hand Painted Signs and Artwork, a uh, tutorial on how to hand letter the one stroke, the single stroke alphabet. Not an easy task at all, but it's the first thing you need to learn if you have any aspirations to hand letter. Uh, check it out. I have my new tripody thing set up. I don't know whether it'll work well or not. Uh, we'll have to see after this video. Um, I want to first give a shout out to my beautiful grandchildren uh, who I just love dearly and also a shout out to every single one of the subscri my subscribers who have put their faith in me and I can't let you down. Uh, uh, I'm going to get to work on this right now. And I told you that I wasn't really happy with my previous videos and I was going to start over from scratch, which this is an attempt to do that. Um, anyway, starting over from scratch would be the most important brush stroke that you can uh, acquire. It's, it's the very first one. It has to be mastered before you can move on to very many more. There's a total of uh, nine, I believe. I count nine brush strokes that make up the one stroke alphabet, the 26 letters. Um, and this is the very first one. It has to be done. And so we're going to get to work on that right now. Uh, right here, I'll tell you the things that you need. Oh, in my last video, I sent you guys scooting off to organize you an easel. And I, I've received pictures from people who show me their setups, and it's really quite nice. It is. Uh, makeshift is perfectly fine. Uh, don't run out and buy an expensive affair for an easel. Actually, a homemade makeshift easel has more character. And it's all you need to start until you really uh, decide whether or not that this is the craft for you. Uh, all right, we're going to get started. I'll tell you what you need to do this. First off, um, you need your easel, which you've acquired and we're set to go on that. Uh, you're going to need some uh, lettering brushes usually just one. I have four here because I'm interested in finding out just what they'll do. Um, this brush is a flat and I'm not well acquainted with flats just yet. I used them quite a bit as a child and then gave them up for the longest time. I'm not sure why. Uh, this was my beautiful gift from Mr. John Downer and I'm going to be trying that out. Uh, this is a brush I've already told you that I like. Uh, this is a Steve Kafka brush in a number eight. Um, I also have a couple of more new brushes that I ordered from John King uh, Letter Art. And uh, these are very attractive. I saw a picture of them and I thought that I just had to have them. And uh, they seem to be different sizes. For instance, this is a number eight in the uh, in the letter art brush and this is a Kafka brush size 8 and they do look a, a, quite a bit different we'll have to check that out but I can tell you about brushes no I really can't tell you about brushes I don't have the finances to purchase a whole lot of brushes which you don't really need right now either but I can tell you there's a lot of nice brushes being manufactured out there um, uh, Mr. Von Dago has put out a new line of brushes, and, and his brushes look beautiful. Uh, there, there's uh, Now, this happens to be a MAC. MAC brushes have a very good reputation. There's a number of good brushes out there that I'm not able to try because I have existing brushes, and my priorities are different. I need to invest in different art materials right at the moment. Uh, but I can tell you, if there's an artist out there that you admire or that you've seen either on YouTube or Facebook or met in person and you admire this particular particular lettering artist, uh, 
don't hesitate by trying his brushes. He would only put his name on brushes that were of the finest quality. So uh, with that in mind, uh, get you a, a good lettering quill or a flat, whichever. Uh, they're going to run you anywhere from $12, $15 up to the $20 and $22 range is what they're going to run you for a good brush. Okay, so now we start. Uh, you'll need a brush. You're going to need uh, your lettering paint. Now, I'm a big fan. Let me set these down here. I am a very big fan of one-shot lettering color. I've used it ever since I was a tiny child, and it's excellent stuff. Sometimes you'll hear bad reviews about it, but uh, there will be far, far many more that are appreciative of this nice product. Uh, either one shot black, or if you can't afford it, or you're, it's unavailable to you, you can resort to uh, Rust-Oleum enamel. And this is available sometimes at Walmart, Lowe's, um, Handy Dan's, those places. Uh, this happens to be Starburst Yellow, uh, which I wish it were black for this tutorial. But uh, nonetheless, this is at Rust-Oleum. It's very inexpensive, and you can use black. Now, for your practice purposes, uh, please only use black. It's far too soon to, for you to graduate to a color, and black shows up your mistakes uh, far better. It shows your improvement far better. Uh, colors just don't do that. Always practice with black paint, Rust-Oleum or One Shot. That will work. Now today I'm I'm working with One Shot. Now mix your paint in a small cup. Uh, pour some of the paint into the cup and thin it with mineral spirits or paint thinner. Uh, when I was a child, we even thinned with gas. That can be done as well, but I don't really recommend it right now for you. Uh, and that was just because that's all we had available at the time. Now, uh, mix it in a cup, add a little bit of thinner if you think it's thick, uh, make it to a consistency that is not too thick, not too thin. Everybody has their own preferences to this. I tend to work with a little thicker paint because I like a little bit of drag. Uh, you don't understand what drag is right at the moment, but it's when uh, your brush doesn't just do its own thing. You have to control it a little bit more when it's a tiny bit thicker. And I always thin a little bit more on my palette if I need to, uh, if I need to thin anymore. So you'll need your paint. You'll need a little cup of the thinner, either mineral spirits or paint thinner, and that's easily and readily available. It's not a problem. Uh, you'll need that. You'll need a palette. You're going to need a palette uh, to work your brush out on, and this can be anything. Uh, it's the stiffer the better, but uh, heavy grade cardboard. Now some men like to use phone books and magazines and they just tear a page out. Uh, I have no objection to that. I, I've never tried it. I always just cut a piece of cardboard or a stiff piece of uh, something and that's my palette. I would advise not to use glass. Glass is a whole nother little it's, uh, it's not that easy to work on, and it takes a little bit more experience. It, um, and they, they tout it so highly because you can do your practice, and then you can scrape it off with a razor blade and use it over and over again to practice. Well, actually, I don't think that's such a good idea at all. Um, I like to use butcher paper. I use rolls of butcher paper in my family and in my business. Uh, try to get you some butcher paper or paper of some sort. I think even gift wrapping paper might work on the back side. Um, just some paper. Get you some paper. Newsprint uh, at the hobby shops. That would be good as well. Um, and the reason for this is because I think you should save. Uh, I think you should save your practice material because that's the only way that you're going to actually see improvement with your own eyes. 
I'm all kind of slatty wonkless here. Anyway, uh, we're just trying this with the new tripod. We'll see if it works. So anyway, uh, yes, I strongly tout paper. Now I got, after I sent you off to get an easel and after some of my original videos, I got a, a number of pictures from artists, aspiring hand letterers, and uh, they sent me pictures where they had practiced their single stroke leg, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. It's the very first brush stroke that you need to learn. Um, and they sent me pictures, and they had uh, they had a half a dozen straight lines. They they may have had 15, and one man sent me about 20 that he had. And I looked at them, and I don't know really. I, I don't mean to be harsh. I don't know what they expected me to say, but it made me realize the importance of letting you know why the stroke I'm going to show you. I have to express how important it is because the importance is not actually the stroke itself. It's what that stroke teaches you that nobody else has mentioned. And so we'll get into that too. But right now, let's go ahead and get this started so that I don't make this video too lengthy. I'm going to start with this calf uh, because I know exactly what it's going to do, I believe. Now, uh, there, I'm going to make a disclaimer here. <laughs> I am. I'm going to, I'm going to um, tell you that my lettering has been changing <coughs> the last little bit. And I don't know whether it's due to an age situation, which naturally, it's well known that aging sign painters <coughs> tend to, their lettering is not quite as sharp. It, uh, nothing you do is quite as sharp. And, uh, but I also believe that maybe it might be some of the medication I'm taping. And I will tell all the people who have been so kind to check on me, I will tell you that I am feeling better. But uh, th with this coronavirus and my back situation, I think I've become a little bit lazy is what some of the deal is. All right, so I've got my um, palette and I've got my brush. The next thing I'm going to show you has been a question posed to me is how I hold my brush. Now, I hold my brush. Let me get it down here. Uh, I guess it's called a pencil grip. And it's usually right behind the silver ferrule is where my fingers just lay like this, if you can see them. Now, I've seen um, other men, not very often, I've, no, I've not seen them very often, but some men hold their brush similar to this. Well, I could just really never do that. I was trained to hold it in a pencil grip. Uh, and I hold it right behind, right about there. Um, and, and so that's my grip. I've been asked that question before, and I hope you can see that because that's my grip. All right, you work your paint out on your palette until you've got a nice chisel. I'm going to get a little bit more paint in there because I want to make this brush stroke. Now this is the most important brush stroke in the entire alphabet. It, this is the one you have to start with, and it's not devised by old sign men. It wasn't put forth in front of you as a punishment or some way to cull out the people who aren't willing to do it uh, by making it either fearful, fearful or redundant, because it does. It gets very redundant. But it, it wasn't, it's not meant to be uh, a practice that you hate. There's so many purposes for this particular stroke and I will explain that to you. All right, we're going to start here. Now this this letter right here is a two inch letter. From this point to here it's a four inch. We're going to do the four inch. We're going to lay our brush down right there. Wiggle it till we get the right width and we're going to come right down. See my brush is dry. So this is not as pretty. Uh, there's all kinds of things happens when I'm making these films, things that I'm not pleased with. 
because they don't show my expertise really. And I showed you in previous vi uh, vi videos that you have to make a real nice snap right there at the end. And then you come up and you finish it off like this right here. And see, I am kind of shaky today, and I wonder if it isn't medication. Because that's just not a pretty snap. It shows that you know a snap, but it's not a pretty snap. All right, so now that is the number eight Kafka. Now we will return, let's go to the number eight letter art. This one right here. Let's see what it does, because I'm real anxious to see some of the differences in these brushes. All right, now it's quite a bit bigger brush. Let's get plenty of paint in there. The wonderful thing about a lettering brush is that it doesn't drip. You can load this brush with a lot of paint uh, and not have it drip. Now, after you begin a letter once in a while, it will try to drip right here, but you'll learn all about that as you practice more. Now, this is the most important stroke there is of all of them, the straight leg. Let's do it with this king. Uh, the gentleman's name is King. You just draw it down and come to, ooh, nice snap there. All right. Now, paper is a little bit more difficult to paint on than some substrates, but it sure does teach you a lot. All right. Now that was the king brush, and whereas I think it made a prettier stroke. Oh my goodness. Let's go over the Kafka. Okay. Right there. And space them just about like this. Uh, this, this stroke that we're going to do over and over again is, um, I've, I've just got to impress on you what it does to teach you. And I'll do that in just a second. There's two main reasons, and this is not one of them. Like I said, these fellas sent me pictures of their work and they'd have 15 of them. 15 doesn't do you any good, kids. 15, because the two most uh, important reasons that you're doing this stroke is number one, focus. Focus is uh, something that you have to practice. You have to approach your practice work and you've got to put everything else out of your mind. You can't be worried about a crying baby or a puppy that needs fed or the car honking across the street. You cannot think about it. You cannot worry about it. You have got to be entirely focused on the stroke that you have in front of you. Now you can play light music if you would like. I was raised in a sign shop where it was just quiet. It was dead silence. You could hear a pin drop. Uh, the old men just didn't really care for music, and I became accustomed to that. I've learned that I do like music. It has to be soft, and I prefer no lyrics because I can't be thinking about what the, the musical artist is saying. I have to focus on what I'm doing. But if you would like to have music on, uh, go right ahead. I encourage that. I do. It's a lovely way to relax. Um, so focus is a, a priority, and this stroke teaches you focus. But the most important thing it teaches you is muscle control, muscle memory. Uh, it, it's the most important thing that this, uh, that this stroke does. Because every time you make it, your body is getting more accustomed. Oh, now this is a, um, what is this here? This is a six. This is a six in the same brush that did this. So it will be a skinnier letter is what this is going to be. Uh, muscle memory cannot be uh, taken lightly. Your body remembers what you're doing here. All right, let's start our letter and down we go. Nice and straight. Don't worry if it leaves little deals like that. Not on paper. That's not a big worry. You've made a nice straight stroke. Now when you go over it the second time, and coming down, yeah, that's nice. Um, when you go over it the second time, 
you don't make that leg any wider. A single stroke alphabet is not named that because it takes you one single stroke to do it. It's named that because of the width. Um, it's a single width and yes you do do it with as few strokes as you can and uh, some men are real interested in speed please don't worry about speed right now you're not going to be working at a bench with other men and you have a quota to do so don't worry about speed uh, and don't worry about how many times it takes you to make a pretty stroke just do it and do it a lot it has to be done over and over and over again well so far actually I like the um, I'm happiest with the letter art brush from a, a gentleman by the name of King his last name is King and uh, that's a real pretty brush but like I say now, there's others out there. I just have not been able to try them. I like that really well. But now we come to the brush that uh, was gifted to me by Mr. Downer. And we're going to get it wet with paint and see what it does. All right. Now this will be a thicker letter, I believe. Maybe not. We'll see. And you try very hard. This is a little less space between than this. But each time you do this stroke, try to get your spacing because it does. That's another thing this stroke teaches you is spacing. Focus, muscle memory, and spacing. Those are much more important than the pretty stroke. You want to try very hard to make a pretty stroke. I mean, that's what we're all trying for. But that's the least problem. I mean, almost any monkey can make a, a pretty stroke, especially this single line. No, it's these other three things that we have to focus on and get your body uh, acclimated to. All right, we're going to lay it down, set our width. See, I'm just as shaky as I can be. And I'm not used to that, kids. I'm really not. And I wonder if maybe it's not some of my medication. I hope so, so I can stop that stuff. I can't stop this aging, though. All right, so now, and then of course when I make these videos, these films, uh, for some reason I'm not at my top-notch, best, prettiest work. It's crazy. All right, well now I love that brush. Oh, thank you, Mr. Downer. Thank you very, very, oh, I appreciate you so much for that gift. You have no idea. Okay, now this is it. Uh, this is the thinner one. It was done with the six. I don't care for it near as much, but if you have to cramp your work, you'll have to work with a skinnier letter. Um, this is a stroke that you need to make over and over and over again, but it doesn't need to be sheer torture, guys. It doesn't need to be. You have to be creative. You have to, like for instance, you can make uh, three or four long ones and then come up here. Cut it off right there. Come down here. Cut it off right there. All right, do that for a while because you are going to have to learn how to twist your brush. You're in charge of this brush. You're actually driving it just as, uh, as if you it were, were a car. You have to make the bend, uh, especially with curved letters. You have to know what that um, brush is going to do. So now, and focus. This teaches you about focus as well. For instance, if I had a job and I had to do this, and this time come down this way, and this time come down this way you're going to have to learn to kick the head in and focus on what you're doing it's it's so important all right so so make a series of those and and then come back oh i like this brush oh my 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 and it's a flat 
and I'm a quill girl. I can't believe it. This is very surprising to me, but I sure do like that brush. So either, now this is a MAC. This is a one half inch MAC flat. Uh, if you want to go into a company called Dick Blick, look for it there. I don't believe you're going to find uh, many. You might find flats at your local hobby store, like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. You might be able to find flats. I know there's one called Sapphire, and it has a blue handle. Uh, now, it's a nice flat. You may be able to find flats at your local hobby store, but you will not find quills. Quills are a very specific brush intended for a specific purpose, and uh, you're not going to find them in a hobby shop. Nobody knows what they are, actually. You're one of the only ones that are even going to know what it is, and you really can't explain it to anybody. So. Now, uh, up here, I am getting ready for Jeffrey's uh, prize that he's waited so patiently for. I'm, I'm going to run you through that in a next video, uh, right from scratch. I mean, you'll watch me make a pounce pattern or how to uh, transfer my design onto the substrate. Uh, this is called, this right here, uh, this right here is called a... Um, a scratch layout. Sign painters, when you hear talking about a scratch layout, it's just a top and bottom line. You always need a top and bottom line. Uh, and you just lay out your sign with a bare scratch and uh, layout. Now, when you make a letter that you already have the top mark, this is how you would do a T. And this is the R. I had to chunk it in, I had to squeeze it in a little bit better so we would probably put a dot in the middle of there because that's not quite enough spacing right there but the dot will take away from that. I'm trying hard to think if I've missed anything. What I need you kids to do, just exactly like you ran off and, and got your easel gathered together, I need you to start on this stroke right here and unlike the young men who sent me photos of their 15 or 16, I would be more impressed if you sent me stacks of your practice paper. Um, I've cut these because it's a good size to practice on for my videos. I've cut these here. If that page was full of practice strokes, if this page was full of straight lines and then that was stacked up clear to your ankle, or even to your knee. Uh, you have no idea how much I had to practice. I'll have to tell you uh, about that one day. It was kind of funny, funny story. Uh, anyway, do these. It's the first. It's the very first brush stroke you learn in a single stroke alphabet, hand lettered with a flat or a quill. I appreciate you so much. Uh, please give me a like and subscribe on my channel if you see that I have any merit at all or I can help you at all. I appreciate every single one of my sub subscribers that have already done that. Um, my goodness, uh, we'll get this done. I'm going to do back-to-back -back videos. Uh, like I said, there's nine of these strokes. The next one will be horizontal lines, and you actually get to make letters with those. But I will tell you how important, and another importance of this particular stroke is that it's incorporated in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. In 15 of the letters, you're going to have to have this leg. So it's not a small thing. Uh, get to work on it, uh, please, and, and practice. Uh, I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you, and I'll be back with the horizontal stroke. Goodbye, and practice, practice, practice.